Father, I'm asking you to still, to still the people long enough that they can hear your voice. Father, for all things that fix and hit this world that they don't see. And I'm asking you to move, Father, not just in this place, but other places. Father, it's time the ministers come together, Father, in unity with your spirit. And I'm asking you to move this day, Father, and let I this man step back and you increase and do not let him believe one word I speak till they check it out with you. And Father, as I step back and you increase, I give you these people, Father, and all the rest that will hear my, this voice. And Father, I give you praise and I give you glory this day and I praise you, Holy God. I magnify thee, Master. As we stand before you this day, Father, I'm asking you to move upon your people and I praise you, Father. We give you glory and praise forever in the name of Jesus. All right. Uh, as I was sitting at the desk yesterday out there where I work, uh, God gave me some scriptures. So I read them, wrote them down while I forgot them when I left. I got to the house last night. God reminded me of them same scriptures. But well, I got two or three Bibles. And the desk in my office is laid out like this all the time. And I need to read it when I go in there. But anyway, God told me to turn to Ezekiel. Chapter 7. I said, okay. So I read it and studied last night. Prayed last night. So this morning I went back in there after I got cleaned up. And I was arguing with God. But he's trying to tell me what to bring forth. And I said, but God, but God. He said, I said, bring it forth. Well, what I did, I shut that Bible, put it up. I got this in out of my briefcase. Laid it down when I did it, fell open to chapter 7 of Ezekiel. So evidently, don't do me no good to argue with you. <laughs> See, I do like Elijah. I'm sorry, I do. I warned some people yesterday things that are coming to them. And I told them, I told somebody, and I, I won't mention no names yet, but I told somebody last night, I said, let me tell you something. This is what God told me to tell you. Why did you not keep the vow you made to God? And they said, what are you talking about? I, I never promised God something and never kept it. I said, no, I didn't say promise. I said, you made a vow. I said, you're near death. And you made a vow to God and you broke it. And I said, there's a brick wall in front of you right now and you're fixing to hit it. They didn't understand that, but that's okay. I don't care. I do what God tells me to do. And this word that I got to tell you people today deals with America. And the people in America because America was founded on Jesus Christ, was given back to Jesus as a country. And God has spared America many times. Yeah. Listen to me, and you listen to me carefully. We are the horn off the beast's head that was wounded near to death in Revelation. And the wound was healed. And the whole world lasted after, lusted after that beast. And that beast is us in 1941, December the 7th. We were near, near death. And God, God spared us. Why? Because people got down on their face before God. And they were failing before God. But now it's too late. Because God said, I will not hear them no longer. For the abominations and the stench of the people have come up to the nostrils of God. I'm telling you, you better wake up. You have very, very short time left. Every generation in the Old Testament that got away from God got worse and worse and worse. And you all talked about all of this nonsense going on in America. What about all these children that are disappearing? What about all these young women that are disappearing? You think that's coincidence? That's Satan. Taking God's people. I told you all here a while back, only rapture you're going to see is God taking people out here by the grave. 
When God comes back, you better listen to me. And you better listen to me carefully. When God comes back for His church, He's coming after His bride. And they're going to be without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And you can believe whatever you want to believe. But you better get in the Word of God and start studying. And don't get in your devil books, call the NIV and all this other trash. Get in the King James and ask God to give you knowledge of it. The reason you cannot understand the King James because you get in the flesh and you think it refers to your flesh, but it don't. It does not have anything to do with your flesh. It strips your flesh. You must first die. You must first die and resurrect it under Jesus Christ. And you become a son of the living God. John chapter 1 says, in verse 12, I believe it is, it says, he, those that He loved, He left them power to become the sons of God. And none of you want to become a son of God. All you want to become is a Christian. God never called you a Christian. He never called me a Christian. Man did. And the Christian has given God a black eye. Two or three of them. You've turned God into something that He's not. God is a Spirit. He's supposed to be in you. He don't walk out here. He's in you. Anyway, Ezekiel chapter 7. First of all, I'm going to read you something out of Isaiah real quick. It's chapter 13, verse 6 out of Isaiah. You better listen careful. How, 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 H-O-W-L, how, ye for the day of the Lord is at hand. You people better wake up. God's return is soon. And you do not want to believe it. You don't even want to believe there is a God. So you brought me in a false God called Islam. Yes. The Islam is going to take America over city by city. And you people are so blinded by your wealth and all your other iniquity, you cannot see it. It shall come as a destruction. So all you rapture preachers, go ahead and preach that all these people are just going to flat disappear and nobody sees it. And then everything's going to go back to normal and then there's going to be people left behind to preach about God. i got news for you. When God comes out to His church, there will be no spirit left. Destruction from the Almighty. This is Isaiah. Chapter 13, verse 6. Read it. Read it. Now listen to me. We are God's chosen if you've got His Spirit in you. But if you have not His Spirit, you're a bastard son. And that's what He says. If you're not chastised by God, you're considered a bastard son. A bastard son is without a father. I'm telling you right now, he is our father. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 1. I will back to see. Are you ready? Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, I didn't want to do any of this, y'all. But you better listen. God is trying to wake His people up. Also, thou son of man, thou said the Lord God unto the land of Israel. Well, I'm saying unto the land of America. Let's forget about Israel. Let's forget about that country over there and the people over there. Let's think about America for a second. Let's call America Israel. Because if you're reborn, you're of Israel. If you're reborn... And I'm not saying a Christian. I'm saying if you are reborn, you will become a Jew on the inward man. Okay? That said the Lord God unto the land of Israel, and, and, end, and end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Look around you. All from north, east, south, and west, there's trouble. 
But nobody wants to say, well, this is tribulation upon the land. This is tribulation in the people. No, we're not going to go through the tribulation. I got news for you. You're already in it. The middle of it. The trumpets have been blown. Michael, the archangel, the great prince is soon to stand one foot on the land, one foot on the sea, and there's going to be all hell break loose upon this world. Yeah. And you people do not want to see it. You do not want to believe it because, oh, God would not do that to me. i got news for you. You're no better than Israel. You're no better than any of them. We are God's people. We're made in His image, the soul, spirit, flesh. But one body. And we're supposed to be one body of Christ. But everybody's preaching something different. We're not supposed to be preaching Baptist, Pentecost, Catholic, Lutheran, whatever. We're supposed to be preaching Jesus. You turn Jesus into an idol of a cross. Jesus is a spirit. And he loves you. And he's in you if you only suck with him. Let me go on. Now is the end. Now is the end come upon thee. I'm talking about these people that are doing all these ungodly things in the dark. God said there will be nothing in the dark that will not be, what? Revealed. In the open. Why do you think all these so-called government officials and all these princes and kings and stuff are sitting, getting uncovered? Because God said there will be nothing that would not be uncovered. And yet you still don't believe it. Oh no. Oh no. I'm going to tell you something. When the king of Israel sinned in the Old Testament, it cost Israel its sin. Because he is the leader. He's supposed to be there by God. Just like our president is supposed to be there by God. So when a president sits there and signs a bill to kill babies, it causes America to sin. Yeah. Oh. Come on. That's right. I don't care whether you like it or not. When you abort these babies like they're doing, it's a sacrifice to Satan himself. And he's laughing at you people. Now all the countries of the world's laughing at us. Yeah. They're saying, where's your God now? And I will send my anger upon thee and I will judge thee according to thy ways. And I'm going to tell you something. When he judges you, it will not be like these sinful judges sitting on the, in the courthouse. He ain't going to be paid off. He's going to judge you according to the deeds done in your flesh and your spirit. Go ahead. I don't care whether you believe it or not. Take it up with God. I tried my best to get out of this. Most people I knew in the past did not like me preaching in Ezekiel. And I will recompense upon thee all things, all thine abominations. Why do you think God hates, as you call homosexuality? Why do you think He hates it? Because it goes against nature itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't love Him. I said He hates the act of it. Mm -hmm. And there's a way out. It's called Jesus. Yeah. You pedophile, whatever you are, there's a way out. Mm -hmm. It's called deliverance by Jesus. Oh, I forget. Y'all don't believe in demon possession. A pedophile is not born that way. Right. He's a demon from hell. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you all something. God told me that he's going to start giving me names. And I'm going to start broadcasting them. Because 
It's in the dark. And they're claiming to be Christians. And they got power over you. Yeah. And they actually tell you what how to live. But they themselves are not living like you. Come on. I'm not, I'm not, I don't like this. But I'm telling you, you better wake up. And my eye shall not spare. And neither will I have pity. See, all of you, every time something bad happens, oh God, why don't you let this happen? This is not God's world. When you get reborn by the blood of Jesus Christ and baptized by the Spirit of God, you become a sojourner. You become a pilgrim in a lost world. This is no longer your home. That's true. But I will recompense you. Thy ways upon thee, and thine abominations will be in the midst of thee. It's really sad. It breaks my heart. When I hear of a preacher, come on, molesting somebody in that church or molesting somebody outside the church or raping their little child or whatever it may be. I'm sorry. It breaks my heart because that child or that person had nothing to do with it until it was too late. Come on. And you should know that I am the Lord. See, the preachers are not preaching God. They're not preaching about Jesus. All they want to do is say, He so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. And we have life and life more abundantly, and I can do whatever I want to do, because I'm saved. <laughs> that is a lie straight from hell. When Jesus comes back, you people, listen, he's coming after his people that have prepared themselves for him. And they are not going to look like, act like, and talk like a duck. Or the world, whatever you want to call it. I'm here to tell you, he's coming after his chosen ones. The 144,000 that stand on the mount with him are the sons of the living God, and they have no denomination in them. Denomination is destroying God's people. I'm telling you, you better wake up. Wake up. Yeah. Let me go on. Thus said, thus said the Lord God, and evil and only evil, behold, it is come. He's bringing it to America, y'all. That's what's wrong with America. America has gotten away from God. America has thrown Jesus out. Israel done the same thing. Look what happened to them. But they don't want to talk about that. Amen. They don't. But I'm telling you, all of this writing, it's God. He's moved His hand. His return is near the door. Yeah. Yeah. And people cannot see it. The preachers need to step back, get right with God, and then come back and start preaching fire. That's right. The ministers of God are supposed to be fire. Yeah. He never told me to be set down. Amen. What the problem is, nobody hears his voice. Right. You know why? Because they're man taught. That's what's wrong with God's people. They're taught by man. They're, they're talk, the fear is taught by a man's precepts. Fear ye him that can kill your body and soul in hell. And that's God. Yeah, yeah. When God took me into hell, he was standing right here with me. And before he stood there, it was dark. I'm talking about dark. Y'all know what dark is. But when he stood right here, it just comes light everywhere. And there was a hideous creature. Standing up on a high, high throne or pinnacle. And he was laughing as the doors up there opened up and people were marching into hell. The more they marched in, the more he laughed. And people are not 
hearing it. They don't believe there's a hell. They don't believe there's a God. And this Islam is going to take America over by storm. Because God is tired of the abominations. The stench had come up into the heavens. I don't care whether you like Trump or any of them. God put them there for a purpose. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. To fulfill the of to fill his word by his spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you like it or not. It's pretty sad. There's so much hate in America right now. Yes. It's unreal. Yes. They got to keep us divided. Yes, Our house that divided is divided will fall. fall. <laughs> yeah. You know what I do, Lisa? When I, you know, you preach and you preach, especially about preaching. I'm a butcher by trade, and I'm taking many hides off. And they all look alike once you take that hide off. That's right. That's right. Hate is man made into you yeah. by man. Yeah. And it it's not you were a sinner by birth, but you did not hate by birth. That's right. It's time the church came together and the sons of God started treading. Me too. The sons of God. He never called up Christian. We're sons. Whether you're male or female. There's neither male or female in Christ Jesus. No bond or free. We don't know God. All we know is what they taught you in the churches. You know why? Because this usually sits in the back window of the car. Most people don't even know this word. You know why? Because they never studied it. Jesus said, eat, eat, eat. This is me. This is my body. If you do not eat of me, I shall die. You shall die. Yeah. Yep. I'm the bread. Yep. Break. Break. Yeah. Break. Right. So the spirit it has nothing to do with the cracker crumb. Right. Paul said, the Lord Himself told me the night that He took bread, He was betrayed. And that's the Rosh Hashanah, and that's what's happening in the churches today. God is being betrayed. Because they think He is a cracker crumb. Verse 7. The morning has come unto thee. O thou that dwellest in the land. I'm talking about America. I'm not talking about just the world. I'm talking about America. My son came and apologized to me. He said, Dad, I want to apologize to you. It's my generation. My generation's done this. We did not teach our children. It had to be God showing that. Our children have been deserted. Woe to those with child in those days. Woe to those who get suck in those days. Why three-fourths of your babies are demon possessed yeah. right out of the womb. And the rest of them are drug babies. And most of them don't even have a daddy at home. Right. Or a mama. Because they got to work because the government has they, they led the, everything so expensive it takes both parents. So somebody else raises our children. That's what's wrong with America. We have let everybody in the world raise our children. And then wonder why they're disobedient. Then you wonder why they're burning buildings down. It's because 2 Timothy, 3rd chapter, we live in the perilous days in the last times. Children will be disobedient to parents. It's in there two or three times. But they don't believe this. Listen to me. You can burn all the history books you want to burn. A, a country without history has no future. Because you can't go back and correct it. You can't correct it because it's not there. Don't you people understand that? 
That's why they got to get God out. So that all Satan has to do is just come on in. When God, when God showed me the destruction of America in 1987, it made me weep and cry. I sat before God from 1987 to 1991 because that's where you learn your word. That's where you get your word. You don't get it from a college. No. Denomination is killing God's people. And that's what's wrong with our children out here running muck today because they did not learn about God. There's no recompense with them. Give them whatever they want. They're our loved ones. No. Uh -uh. It says you spare the rod. Hate, hate the child. That's right. It don't say spoil. That's, right. That's man's word. Hate the child. If you do not, if you spare that rod, you hate that child. Because he is not, he does not know that there is an end to it. He do whatever he wants to do. And that's what these Baptist people do too. I'm sorry. You cannot be saved all the time. Once you're saved, always saved. No, sir. You can walk away from your salvation anytime you want to. All right. They don't want to believe that. That's okay. And the Pentecostals. Well. <laughs> oh, man, i got to watch on them. That is a disgrace. Yeah. They have ruined so many people. The Pentecostal movement states they say it. They don't even know the word. It says, if a woman, if a woman has long hair, let it be her glory. It does not say anything about her short hair. Mm -hmm. But they ruin many women like that. I don't know how to get on that stuff. I'm telling you, we need to wake up. Get out of it. Come ye out from among them, and I'll receive you as sons and daughters. Come out. Yeah. He means come out of your nomination. Mm -hmm. It's got to be taken out of you. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. Oh, yeah. Oh, thou that dwells in land, the time has come, the day of trouble is near. And not the sounding again of the mountains. You don't hear the mountains singing. Guess what they are? Come on. They're the churches. I told y'all last year, you remember, I said there's a time coming not very many, far down the road yeah. that the doors will more or less be shut. God told me and I told y'all then when I ministered, God was going to shake the sports arenas. Yeah. I'm not here to please y'all. I'm here to wake the church up because it's out of order with God. I'm here to tell you all, you better get right with God. Repent of anything that you can find. Go to the toilet. <coughs> Go to the toilet. If you sin daily, then you've never got saved. That's right. Because it goes against my Father's Word. If you sin, you're of the devil. It's in 1 John chapter 3. But they don't want to preach that in the churches. You know why? They don't have nobody out there. Because he's just as bad. <laughs> now, will I shortly pour out my fury? I'm telling you, God is mad. Yeah. God, I've never seen him weep. I have. I've seen him weep. I've seen him. I don't go with them people out there, believe me or not, I don't. I know where I've been with God. It really breaks my heart that people think that God don't talk to people today. Oh, yeah. It really breaks my heart because God, He don't just shout out sometimes. He speaks to you. Yeah. You know what? Let me tell you all a little story before I get any more. When I first got reborn, I don't let's forget about saved, okay? When I first got reborn, 
I'm in this little church with my mama. That's where God told me to go. I didn't know the voice of God like I do now. But when he comes down that garage that night, I knew who he was. But let me tell y'all something. When I'm at that church, I made a whole three months. But God was still using me. And I wasn't supposed to be doing that in there. I didn't know that, see. So one night, he's on him. This four years. I think it's 1990. They said, Brother Bobby, can you come back? We're going to pray for you. And my mom, I, I took her home that night. It was on a Sunday. And I told her what they wanted. She said, are you going? And I said, I'm going to come. So well, that stupid little white pickup I was driving at the time, it just made you turn right straight back to that church. <laughs> See, I don't know this is God, y'all. That most people don't know God. They don't. They don't know God, and they're not ready for the. They're not ready, ready for their so-called rapture either. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. Anyway, I get in there. They want to pray. For me. That's okay. Fine. But they want. To, they want to deliver me. Cause I'm exalting myself. See, the mistake was the assistant pastor come up to me that morning and said, "Brother, brother, will you pray for me?" I thought she. Knew Pray, you know. She said, no, I mean, right now, pray for me. I'm sick. So I, I just said, I said, the little prayer went on out the door. Well, come find out. She went and told the preacher. Told the preacher, said, let me tell you, I, that's that young man. I was about 40, 40, and I was a little older now. And I was healed instantly. Well, that exalted me. But anyway, they set me in this chair, poured oil all over me, poured it down my throat, laid a Bible on this. Yellow, little, light, yellow shirt. It's a purple Bible, matter of fact, but it's still there. The imprint of it. But anyway, they pour all this oil over me in there. They're doing all this trying to cast demons out of me. And I heard them, I said, God knocked me out. And I'm, I'm out. And all of a sudden, I come alive and I heard this voice here, mine. And see, I don't, I didn't know God's voice like I do now. And I said, yeah, the God delivered me when I started my ministry. And boy, I come alive. God started quoting scriptures to them that I hadn't even read yet. Mm. But I'm telling you, you need God. But now, I still hear a voice. And a stranger will I not follow. You can ask my wife about that. They, they like want me to go all these places. And usually it's a prophet. They don't want to meet, they don't want to take me to. God will show me in a minute that they say his name. You know, all of these glorify these big ministers. They glorify them. Put them up on these big pedestals. My wife, thank you, there that night in Joaquin, Texas. Yeah. That man walked around and put it in <laughs> Shook everybody's hand, but when he walked to me, he went that way. Yeah. You know why? Because God raised me up in that meeting to give a message. And he didn't like that message. I ain't never seen anybody ride a motorcycle straight up. <laughs> he said he's going to ride his motorcycle up and crash her. I want to see him do it. But I'm telling you, flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's right. When we see Jesus, that's going to be the greatest moment this world has ever known. Yes. They're actually going to see him as he is. Amen. When John and them seen him on the Transfiguration Mountain, and he had to cover himself with a cloud. When Moses, when Moses stood before him, he had to put him in the cleft of the rock to shield him. Yeah. Jacob said, I'm so blessed because I wrestled with God and still live. Mm -hmm. He said, seen God. You cannot look above God in the flesh and live. It will consume you. 
They think that bomb over there in Beirut was powerful. They don't know the God I serve. Listen to me. We're going to have to start walking in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When a man looks at a woman, he should see just a woman that's pretty. That's blessed by God. When a woman sees a man, she, he, she should not be opening his rear end. But they do. And women shouldn't be walking around with no clothes on. Because that's a man has a photographic mind when it comes to a woman. That's Satan. I'm telling y'all, we're not right with God. Denomination is not going to get you in against heaven. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you one other little secret. Peter's not standing at the gate. Right. <laughs> yes, Father. I accomplish my anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways. You know what bothers me, sisters and brothers? I hear so-called Christian people say they're not going to judge. Oh, Judgment right. starts at the house of the Lord. That's right. See, they don't know the word. Judgment's going to start at the house of the Lord. Where's yeah. it going to put the sinner? And the disobedient. Starts at the house of the Lord. This is the house of the Lord. Yeah. A building's just a building, y'all. Right. Right. A statue's just a statue. It can't do you no harm. Unless he jumps on you. Come on. I'm serious. You know, it blessed me. Brother Enrique, it blessed me the other day when I got that message from Mexico. That they went in and, and, and prayed for these people that had COVID-19. And God healed them. Yeah. It blessed my heart, y'all. Mm -hmm. Because I got more or less kicked out of the story yesterday. That's okay. It's okay. You like a challenge. Huh? You like a challenge. Yeah, it was a challenge, all right. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Then keep your coke. I don't need it. I'm telling you, it blessed my heart. Why? Because now they got 30, 40 people and they, they went to another house and God started moving. Yes. And that same people once sat here last year and God told them what was going to happen. Yeah. In Mexico. Yeah. And we can't get God to already move in America because the people are stupid. <laughs> stupid means ignorant. Yeah. Let me tell you all something right now. There's a time coming not very far down the road that you're going to be called infidels. Yeah. So what are you going to do? When they stand you right out in the street corner and put a knife in your throat or a gun in your head, that you either renounce Jesus Christ or you die. What are you going to do? Praise it's the coming. Lord. Oh, it's praise coming. the Lord. Yeah. It's coming. Praise Jesus. It's coming. Yeah. You can't see it. Prisoners are full of it. Yeah. It's the biggest movement in the prisons ever known to me. Yeah. It's in the prison of the Muslim, Muslim movement. They're trying to pass laws right now in cities. It's called surreal. And when it takes a hold, you women have no place to run. The homosexuals have no place to run because they'll kill them. Yeah. You sure can't smoke in public. That's one of their rooms. It's already here. It's already here, though. I told you in October that we had one year of freedom, which you know, freedom. I better start looking around. It's I get God to give me a day. That yeah. time, one year. Look around. You got to stand, Can you see stand it. right here. Yeah, it says it when I go. <laughs> Let me tell you my name. When I, went to, when I ministered to prisons, you know, the prisons, they got this glass. You have to minister through that glass. It's stores, same way now. 9-11 put us prisoners of our own country and we allowed it to happen. There's one man. 
That's the law. One man. And all the rest of it is in there putting them under like this. Come on, y'all. We're prisoners. You don't believe me? Go to the airport. Yeah. Don't go there. Go to the airport. I'm going to see y'all just leave. I'm going to see y'all have to wait two hours to go through their security. Go ahead. Why in the world do you think they're trying to get your eyeballs? Can we tell you why? Because all of them looking like Muslims got there with a mask on. I'm serious. I'm not joking, y'all. I am not joking. They have to get that eyeball so they can actually scan you. That way they'll know who you are. Because you know who you are with that mask on. Do you think I'm kidding? I'm not. But I'm going to tell you, anything I'm saying, you take it up with God. Because it's here. It is here. I've heard people say, well, it could never happen in America. It's here. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's here. Pedophile. Pedophilia is what they call it. And it couldn't happen in America. Every day. Yeah. Thousands. Every day. But no, they just turn a blind eye to it. It's not. Why? Because the news media is hiding it. Yeah. The news media is not of God. It isn't. The government is not of God. It isn't. Right. Listen to me. We have voted ungodly people in the offices that is changing our godly laws. Right. Yeah. That kept away with the Constitution till it's almost gone. Yeah. All they got to do is disarm you. All they got to do is disarm you, and they'll be done. I guarantee it. They're doing it. I told them in 1991 or two, if I remember right, wasn't it 92? I told them that you'll change the gun law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody believes me. That's okay. I got it out there. I told you when all this stuff started. March the 19th, I believe it is, it's on my page, that this was a test run for total control of the government. And I said, when all the pieces are fitting together, the societies you know right now, that was in March, will no longer exist. It's called a new norm. I told y'all. I told tell Facebook. I even put it on my ministry to warn the people that this was here. But it says that in the Bible. That's all I ever give. You know, that's sad, ain't it? That they can't see what's going on. They're blind. Paul said, if our gospel is hid, then the God of this world has blinded their eyes. Yes. Satan's the God of this world. Mm -hmm. It ain't God. What, Paul, what God, what Jesus tell the king that day, or wherever he was over Rome, he said, if I was of this world, I pull ten thousands of my saints. You wouldn't be crucified in that for sure. And he said, I'm not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. Right. Now listen to me, people, you better listen to me carefully. If you are reborn and claim that Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God is in you. Yeah. In you. Yeah. Jesus said, when that you come near, say the kingdom of God is coming out of their dwelling. But nobody wants to preach about the kingdom. Nobody wants to preach about the sons of God. Because they don't believe they're the sons of God. When you go cast out a devil, you better that demon knows who's in you. Yeah. Yeah. He knows. No, you can't swim at all. Don't be like the sons of Scythia. Well, I cast you out in the, the God that Paul serves. Oh, well, we just bring a little holy water. Ain't no such thing, holy water. They have made so many packages to take God away. It's no more holy over in Jerusalem than it is here. God ain't over in Jerusalem. He's in you. He's in them people if they're reborn. But they don't make Israel the land 
holy. You know, when we lived over on another street in, in Marshall, people used to love to come to our house. There wasn't no TV. There wasn't no arguing. The people said that the moment they stepped on the curb, they would feel the presence of God. Amen. Our daughter, when she was pregnant, she come during the daytime just to sleep in our house. We had people from Oklahoma, state and ladies, said we even the water was morning. Well, it wasn't. I don't know. I, same to me. Yeah. But I'm telling you, you've got to clean your house. Clean your house. That's your house. Get God in it. Anoint your house. Not with olive oil. These hands are anointed if you got Jesus in you. You know why people are not, aren't being healed today? Because they trust the doctors more than they trust God. You know what I've heard people say? Well, the doctors replace God. It's crazy. If it wasn't for God, they couldn't do what they do. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Don't make sense. You would. Verse 9. And my eyes shall not spare me when I have pity. God is serious here. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thy abominations that are in the midst of thee. You know, listen to me. All these people gathering together, doing whatever they do out here, I don't know. That don't mean God's in their midst. Just because they dance up there behind the pulpit, I'm talking about pull into the pit. This is a podium. It's not a pulpit. Pull them into the pit. Pull them the pit pull. You know, pull them out of the pit. I'm sorry. That's just the way I feel. I'm telling you, just because they sing and do all this other stuff don't mean God's there. If that spirit that is in them does not believe or confess that Jesus came in the flesh, it's Antichrist. Let me tell you another little secret. Satan cannot cast out Satan. That's right. Right. That's what he's saying. You know what bless me the Holy Ghost is? Well, I'm going to tell you all what it is. When you call a man of God that's really a man of God, a false prophet or a false teacher or a false anything or he's of the devil, you bless me the Holy Ghost because the Spirit of God is in you. Right. And I have, I've ministered more than one big evangelist. And they don't like me. You know why? Because God uses me to tell them, get right with me before it's too late. God told me to tell Jimmy Swagger right up there in Oklahoma City. And he did not like what I wrote in that page. God said, if you do not come back to where I started you from, I will take you down. And that's 1991 that I gave him that message. Jesse New Planets is not going to heaven on a motorcycle. That's right. <laughs> Nobody is. Kenneth well, Copeland. It's not going to fly to heaven. It's probably in jail. That's right. It does not take all that to preach the gospel. They're taking it from you. I think every minister, every prophet, every preacher should have to work. Yeah. That way they know where you had your got your money from. And they wouldn't be wrecking you over the coals and making you feel guilty because you ain't got what they got to give. I'm 70 years old and I still work. I cut this out here yesterday, cut that one over there, and I cut another one. I cut yards too. You know why I cut yards? I can get along with God. Nobody can bother me on that long one. <laughs> Nobody. Except the hornets come out of this. <laughs> <laughs> they got me. And I'll get you running. <laughs> they got me. 
that long old left behind, though. <laughs> <laughs> he was chasing. It wasn't too funny. It's funny now. But it wasn't funny then. I bet it's been funny about it saying it. They come out with a pompous <laughs> scratch, man. I mean, look, it, they come out. They've got to tell me it was And you came off the lawnmower, right? I sure did. <laughs> and you should know that I'm the Lord that smiles. Why do you think these young kids are out here writing? The same way when Jesus was crucified. Don't y'all remember? Read the word. They brought Barabbas out. They brought Jesus out. Now listen. I'm not going to mention no names or nothing. Understand, they brought Barabbas out. They brought Jesus out. All it took was one person. Yeah. There's a multitude there. Yeah. And said, who should we release? Barabbas. 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 Like wildfire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing's happening in America right now. Kill. 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 All it took. One man. It's just like wildfire. Just like a wildfire. God don't care whether you're black, purple, polka dotted. That's right. He don't care. He wants your heart. Yeah. It's time that people come together with loving arms around each other. But no, they want to burn and destroy because that's Satan. Yeah. That ain't God. And the preachers, wherever they're at, should be ministering to them people that's doing this. Instead of joining them. If they want to kneel on the football field, then the announcer will say, let's all kneel and pray. Yeah. It's been done with. Been over with. Yep. That's all it took. But that had been simple. That's all it did too. All they had to do is say, let's all pray. That's all they had done. It's been over with. But no. They can't do that. Because they don't have God gone. Mm -hmm. Their God is that football team. Yeah, that's right. Their God is that basketball team. Yeah. Their God is that stupid movie star. She ain't no more star, or he ain't no more star than I am. He's just a man yep. that's in iniquity. Yep. You know what I call Hollywood? Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood. Because they got more hell in it than America has. Because three fourths of them. Wait, I take that back. 99%, I'm sorry. 99% are the devil. Yep. And they, listen to me, all you government officials, you cannot be in the government in office of any, almost any kind and be a, a believer. You know why? Because you're going to lie. Yep. Many and all liars shall have that part in the lake that burns with fire. Yeah. It's in Revelation, you want to know where it's at. But I'm telling you, you can't do it. You're going to lie to somebody. And a lot more things. To cover it up. All right, I'm going. Behold the day. Behold it is come. The morning has gone forth. The rod had blossomed. Pride with buddy. You want know broad that is? The olive tree. It's budded gone. You better look at the tree. Because when it pulls, bloomed, and budded, his coming is nigh the door. But they don't see this. All this stuff is not just history here. This is telling you to get right with God because he's coming and he's going to have it, your reward in his hand. You know why I love that song that Lord Rather Lynn sang, The Judgment Day, The Great Judgment? Because it was her that was crying out for, for, for mercy. But it was too late. But when she woke up, she got out of her face before God. That's what it takes. You've got to get before God. You know what's wrong with the, the, the churches today? I'm going to be straight honest with you. The daughters of Zion are not prevailing before the altar. The daughters of the churches 
We need churches to abandon before God more than we need loaves. Yeah. <laughs> we need God. God is not in Lowe's. He's not in Walmart. He's in, supposed to be in His people. He dwells in the praises of His people. Yes. That's why you gather together usually is to praise Him. You don't gather together with a little pamphlet telling you what God's going to do this, 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 this. Well, he don't do that. Where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. Yes. Let me tell you something. No prophet told me. He nailed me before I was reborn. He nailed me on a lot then. And let me tell you what he told me. He said, "Let me tell you something, brother Bobby. God will not go against God. That's right. In other words, if that man up there is of God." preaching the Word of God and with the Spirit of God, this prophet back here will not hesitate to stop. Right. He'll stop. Because the prophet is subject to the Spirit and Spirit to the prophet. Right. Yeah. And he will not go against that man of God up there. The only thing God will use him for is to give a message and nine times out of ten that man up there will interpret it. That's all there is to it. Boy, it got me in trouble in that little church. It's the same one doing the prophecy and the interpretation. And I uncovered it. I didn't. God did. It got me in trouble. See, God never used me in um, interpretation before. So they had a revival that night. And somebody, the same one, gave a message. And all of a sudden, God took me by the hair, just like this, stood me up in the midst of all these people. Y'all think, think that is embarrassing, you're wrong. He picked me up like this, and my mouth blew open. It's no longer my church. No longer my church. He said, my people. See, there's a difference. Big difference. And that got me in a lot of trouble. But I don't, I don't know. I didn't know that God was doing that. Listen. You sit under the school master until God gets you ready to go. But he's not going to leave you there. When God, when you actually get reborn in a church, which most of them don't, they just get saved. They just go to the altar and cry a little bit and go on. When you get saved and actually reborn, nine times out of ten, God will not leave you there. You know why? Because you become just like they are. And the silver becomes dross. You're made out of gold. You're the streets of gold. You're the jewels of the kingdom. Paul seen the New Jerusalem come down upon the new earth. The New Jerusalem is the people of God. It's not a city, city. Jesus said, go. It is the spirit that I go. For if not, I cannot come back to you. But I must go to prepare a place for you. For in my Father's house there are many mansions. He didn't say he's going to build me a house. He said, you're the mansion. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Don't y'all know that? He said, if you put plenty of mansions together, you must have what? A city. With streets of gold, you've got to be tried as by fire. Mm -hmm. To become gold. And, and they have taken that and turned it their way. When Apostle Paul handed me the Word of God in his hands, and I don't agree with you people out there, believe it or not, when God took me there, he said, Receive ye now the engrafted Word of God for my son Paul. And he handed him over a little wall about that tall and said, Receive it. And he kissed me on the cheek and set my mouth on fire. I'm nobody special. And neither of any of you, if God starts using you, then you're special to Him. Right. All you gotta do is be this, all, all you gotta do is be obedient. Mm -hmm. If you be obedient, listen to me. If you be obedient to the Word of God and to the Spirit, your children will be saved. Yep. It does not matter what it looks like. 
That's his promise to you. Yeah. 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 And you ain't going to know it anyway if you go in. I can't find it in my father's word where I went and met my mama. Right. <clears throat> it's not there. And I want to tell you all something else about this so-called rapture. The multitude under the altar. It's in Revelation. About the 8th chapter. The multitude under the altar. The altar is a sacrificial place in the Old Testament. Under the altar, under the low law, there was a multitude that were given white robes and they were crying out for the revenge of their blood. And John said, who are these? He said, these are the ones who died for the, their testimony, the coming of the Messiah. And if you go on there, two or three verses on, there's a multitude. A multitude which no man could count. The number of the sins of the seas and the stars. He said, who are these? He said, you must know. He said, no. He said, these want to come, come out of great tribulation. There's all kindreds, all nations, all tongues. That's their rapture. But that first one over here, if they're going to Matthew, they'll find out in the 27th chapter, I believe, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, the veil was ripped from top to bottom. The graves of the saints were opened. Yeah. And they were seen wandering in the city. Mm -hmm. You don't believe me? Read it. It's there. God is God, y'all. You can't change Him. Why do you think I do not like this new music in the churches? It has no God in it. It has no anointing. The anointing must draw you. Mm -hmm. If you are not drawn by the Spirit of God, you cannot enter in. I don't care what you do. And these songs have no spirit. I might well go to a country concert. Get more enjoyment out of it. At least I'll be tapping my foot, maybe. I don't even do that, do I? I, I mean, I, I, I'm not a, a musical fan. I'm not. To me, I can take it or leave it. I like old Southern gospel. Because I can feel the power of God. Yeah, well, it's just because you're yeah. old. But I'm telling you, this new music, now they got this time Father God in the church, uh -uh, that's not God. He's God the Father. Not Father God. You're, you know who you're praising in? Osiris. The God of the underworld. That's who they're praising. That's why you don't see no miracles in the churches today. And the only time that term comes up when they start praising him or start praying. And it's really bad in the churches. I, you don't have to take my word for it. Look it up. Look it up. God the Father. I'm almost done, maybe. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. Boy, isn't that the truth? None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs, neither shall there be waiting for them. Amen. Y'all don't understand. Y'all do not understand when somebody comes to me why I reject some of them when they want prayer. Because God said, you do not lay a hand on them. When I pray for somebody to get saved, you know what I do? I say, God, I don't care if you have to take it to the bowels of hell, but you save them. He's like the man that got shot. Remember, we was coming back from Oklahoma. He got shot right here in the temple. And they called me. said, he's been shot. And they don't expect him to live another two or three hours. I said, I got with her. I said, God, do not, do not let him die till I get there. I know who I am in God. Believe me. Oh. We got to Longview, Texas. We we come from Oklahoma City. We got to Longview, Texas. They rushed me in there. Isn't it? I think it was a Good Shepherd. I don't remember. It was. But anyway, they take me in this room. And his head about this big with all his scars. He's got no nostrils right here, nothing else. I run him out. 
I'm looking at him. And sometimes I'm looking, I'm just going, looking him up and down. And all of a sudden my hand goes, Yeah. And I said, You demon of death, I'll bind you at no power of this. Be ye healed. I walked out. I told the people sitting there, I said, He'll be out in seven days. He's still alive today. But I'm telling you, you know what? They had a homecoming party for him. Right over there in Marshall, Texas. And I went. They asked us to come. I went. I couldn't find him. I said, where is he? I ain't going to mention no names. Right? And they said he's in there. So I went up in there, and there's, he's laying on the couch. I walk up to him. He's just laying there. The rest of the morning. I said, do you remember, do you remember me? Because I figured he didn't know anybody out there brain. He said, yeah, you're the one that introduced me to Jesus. Oh. Amen. Spirit, the Spirit, yeah. the Spirit of God did. Nobody was in that room but me and him. Mm -hmm. right. And all you see was his nostrils right there. Mm. Same way with my daughter up in the trauma center in Oklahoma City. I walked in there and I run out and I said, In the name of Jesus. She's in a motorcycle wreck, done killed her husband. She's laying, I don't even recognize this girl. And Jesus walked into that room. She's still alive today and so is Jesus. I'm telling you, that's God. Yes, sir. That's what's wrong with God's people. They're not praying. You've got to fast and pray to get closer to God. God does not work with the flesh. Let me tell you something. When I started my ministry, I fasted three days a week and stayed before God as He's fun. He spun me just like this with everything. And then he took a spoon and dipped into it and stuck it in my mouth. Then he gave me a scroll. He said, eat. Eat. It's going to be honey in your mouth, but it's going to be bitter when it hits. And he said, you will prophesy to the nations. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to tell you to wake up. Wake up. God is coming. Are you ready? Are you ready? Examine yourself. That's what he said. Examine. Put yourself under a microscope. If you've got anything from the red here, you better get rid of it. Unless it's holy. You know how many people I've delivered from that hereditary spirits? You know how many Christians that they call themselves I have delivered with witchcraft? Because they played with a Ouija board. Or they went to a palm reader. And then on Sunday morning they'd be shouting and dancing and talking in tongues. And walk right out the door and do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happens every day. Yep. The spirit, the mystery of iniquity. Well and good. It's working all around us and people can't see it. Yep. See, Satan used to work in the dark. Now all he has to do is he's in the open now. That's right. Right. That's right. And nobody wants to stand up against him. Sad, isn't it? Sad. I don't know about y'all, but that's who I want. If I'm in a war, I want him in my foxhole. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all something. Either you meet him now, or you'll meet him going out. You better not want to meet him going out. And let me tell y'all, all, all of you so-called rapture preachers, and talk about people coming out of graves because they misinterpret one scripture. But anyway, that don't matter. There's nobody in that. There's nobody in that grave. That's right. The moment you die, the moment you die, your spirit leaves your body, the soul goes straight to its maker, and your flesh goes right back to dust. Okay. Of course, not now. Egypt learned how to be bombed. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, it comes to money. But your soul goes to its maker. Yeah. Yep. And you're either judged right then, you either go in paradise with Jesus, or you're going to prison. 
final judgment day. And in that judgment day, you'll be judged according to the deeds done in your place and spirit. And if you have been wicked, there's a place called fire and all hell and its demons. You'll be delivered up in the lake of fire and you'll be put in there with them. Forever. For me, I hope and pray that I dance before the throne. That's my objective. You've got to run this race patiently. Mm -hmm. Patiently. Mm -hmm. Pray for patience. You're going to need it. Yeah. Revelation said it's where the patience of the saints come in. But that, you know, they don't know the word. You know why? Because the preacher's told them, don't pray for patience to Job. You do, you're going to get tribulation. You better pray. This is beginning only if your sorrows out here right now. There's going to be more diseases coming real soon. And listen, as God spoke right here the other night, they'll be laying out in the streets dead. What are you going to do? I'm telling you, there's going to be more diseases than you ever know. I told you back in the 90s that all the old time diseases were going to come back full force. I'm telling you. I've already had a hooping problem a long time ago. So I ain't worried about it. Before I was ever born, I mean, grown up. Yeah. I had the measles. Me too. I had chicken box. Me too. But I never had a polio shot. You know why? Because my mom and dad fought against it. We just do whatever we're told now. We just like sheep going to the slaughter. Yeah. With the scapegoat. You know what a scapegoat is? The scapegoat is one that leads the sheep up to the slaughter up again. And then he just goes another way and they just go right on in there. Yeah. It's called Big Brother. That's what you want to call it. Yeah. Big Brother. Big Brother watching you. Let him watch. I. I'm telling you. We're being led to the slaughter. And you people cannot see it. Unless I'm wrong. I've been known to be wrong. I've never seen God be wrong, though. Now, go down to verse 15. The sword is without and the vestments and the famine within. You know what the famine is? The famine of the Word of God, the famine of the Spirit. It has nothing to do with the famine of the world. It has to do with the famine of God in these churches. The Spirit of God is no longer in the churches. It's time we come out of the whore. The one that's set up on the waters. It's called denomination. When five, five women take hold of one man wanting to claim his name but want to wear their own apparel and do their own deeds but be called by his name, that's the church is called denomination. See, this is the trouble. I didn't interpret the word. I didn't interpret the word. God did. It's already there. A lady asked me what I had to do with that fifth angel sounding. So we'll see what I got to do with that fifth angel. I'm sounding the alarm right now. Jesus is coming. And it's near the door. His hand is near the door. And when he comes back, let me tell you all something. That sky is going to split wide open. Yeah. And Jesus Christ himself is going to step out. Yes. And this is his footstool. The earth is his footstool. Yes. Let me tell you something else. You're not going to see three little gods running around. There's no such thing as a trinity in Jesus. Me and my father are what? One. One. You and me, me and the father. We and you. It's going to be pretty crowded with three of them in there. <laughs> you know how I describe the the, the Trinity deal, I say, I want something. I want God to do something. Hey, Holy Ghost. You say, what? 
I said, I need this. He said, I don't have to do it. Go to Jesus. Okay? I go to Jesus. Jesus, I need this done. He said, I don't know. Go to the Father. Well, what the Father don't know where you're going? There's three of you sitting there. Me, myself, and I. Flesh, spirit, and soul. That's so simple. It has nothing to do with your worldly daddy. That's what I'm saying. The Pentecostal movement has run God's people. Hear, O Israel, your God is one God. Yeah. Moses said, Who should I say sent me? I am. Jesus said, for Abraham, I am. I'm going to go back and have that relationship that I had in the beginning in the bosom of the Father. The words in the bosom of the Father. The Word. He told it to happen. It happened. It's the same way as you. It don't come out till you speak it. You can't think it done. Hey, wall move. You take a hammer to it. Come on, y'all. That's all there is to it. Yes, I'm a oneness preacher. And I didn't learn in a church house. You want me to tell you how I found out God is one? One night I was praying in the car. That's where I used to pray for hours. He, all of a sudden, he put me in that floorboard and I felt the world on top of me. And I heard this voice. Boy, I really started ministering. He said, Hear, O Israel. Your God is one God. I ain't saying nothing. A little harder. Second time. Hear, O Israel, your God is one God. A little harder. I didn't answer. And third time. Hear, O Israel, your God is one God. I said, yes, God, you're one God. I know who God is. He is your God if you allow it. But you've got to ask Him to come in. Mm -hmm. He said, I will go in a dwelling place that man's hands has not touched. Why? Because man's hands defile. It's the same as baptism. I don't know why I'm on all this. When you told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And now Nicodemus said, how can I be an old? Go back in my mother's womb. He said, first you must be born of the water, which is your mother's womb, which is flesh. And then you've got to be born of the Spirit. And it got all confused with water baptism. Mm -hmm. It's so simple. And Nick could even spoke it to itself. How can I enter back in my mother's womb being old? How simple is that? Simple. Jesus said, You know who I am. And my Father, the Father will let you know who I am. I'm just putting it in English. Nothing happens. Listen, in the Word of God, nothing happens. You know, bad or anything you do, God will give it to His promise. I mean, how many times? Y'all heard me say it was a darkness in my soul. I've been preaching for years. And it's here. Yeah. It's here. Mm-hmm. It ain't just here. It's all over the yeah, world. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell y'all, I told y'all all years back that God was going to pour His Spirit out on all flesh. And you do not receive it. It's gone. There will be no second chance. And people right now, all over the world, Kneeling down in the streets right now, crying out to God. Except America. America was gospel. Because they had not been in tribulation for now. Now they're fixing to really get bad. Yeah. Y'all ain't seen nothing. And they jerk the rest of your freedom, you'll see. And they're doing it. They're going to do it. I told people that back in the 90s when I first came here, there was a time coming you couldn't afford insurance. He said, the time coming you're going to have to get completely on God. Mm-hmm. I said, there'd be cars 
And I hear that they shut down with the button. I said that in 1992. Am I right or wrong? I told them about it. I told them about the guns and all this. They, you think they believe me? No. God showed this to me. When He anointed me in that garage that night, He showed me a plaque that's coming up on this world like this right here. It's rolling. He said it's so dark. People cannot see in it without me. I'm killing you. If you're claiming anything other than Jesus Christ, you're committing adultery. Because you send these angels out in Revelation, and also over here, in Revelation, he said, do not harm the grass or anything else that they will mark. Send God's word with his mark, the blood of the Lamb. That's the only thing you're going to get you in, the blood of the Lamb. And they all think he's just a little man sitting in the picture. He's God Almighty. He took one thing and calmed down the whole world. Now, and also history, they all think he's just a man. He's the Son of God in the flesh. Yeah, yeah. Only. Only. That we and you can look upon. You know why? Because of what Israel did. Israel said, when, that, when God come down on the mount, in the court, there's a fire all around that mountain. And it quaked. The cloud come down. Mm -hmm. And Moses and God, the yeah. children of Israel said, right out, do not ever let us see this again. Yeah. And yet God said, I'll give you so make Satan a promise in Genesis. But to the seed of this one, I'll lose your head. That's Mary. And now the Catholic Church thing is called this star. Well, she's called this star. She's a Babylonian false god of sexual women. Yeah. I don't really want to believe it or not. She's also the god of Easter. I don't really want to believe it or not. Look it up. Esther. Easter. Esther. Right. See, they do these holidays and try to bring God in. And the first church fought against this. The first church fought against it. The disciples, some of them, got their feet cut off in the churches, in the meetings, because they kicked them altars over for doing the communion they're doing today. And we think we suffer. They got their feet cut off. Let me go on. He that is in the field shall die with the sword. God, the field's out here in the world right now. The field is not just the field right over here. The field is the world. The field is America. And he that is in the city, famine, and pestilence shall devour them. Maybe I, I, there's some. Maybe I'm too old or something wrong with me. But I don't see what the death of one man. I don't care if it's a white man, black man, purple man, purple polka dot, or yellow man, has to do with burning the building. I have no idea why they burn building, except they're back. They're evil. That's all there is to it, evil. Listen to me, all of you. Chapter 6 of Matthew says, I ain't going to give you the verb. You can look it up. It's the Lord's Prayer. Chapter 6. Our Father which art in heaven, give us this what? Daily bread. Forgive us what? Our trespasses. We what? Forgive those that trespass against us. And, and go on a little bit farther. Right under that same scripture. Read it. It says, if you, if you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven of your heavenly Father. Yeah. Right. So you can now, you can claim Christianity all you want to. Yes. Y'all go ahead and hate one man. Go ahead. Yeah. It's going to crucify you. Yeah. 
Go ahead and vote for those that kill babies and claim yourself a Christian. And I usually don't get into politics, but I'm telling you, that's where you stand today. Matter of fact, we shouldn't even be involved, really, without prayer. Amen. Yeah. We should never go to the voting poll without prayer. We should enter the voting poll with prayer. Yeah. Then people in the voting poll should be praying. Yeah. <clears throat> but no! we got two parties now. Democrat and Republican. Crazy! We got all kinds of people running. It's crazy, isn't it? So yeah. we're God. America's a God. No, America is not. God has pulled His Spirit from America. And only the chosen ones are going to hear Him. When He visits you in the midnight hours, you better listen. When God says run, you better run. And God said, you be still, you better be still. Let me, I'm going to tell you all this vision I had when I was praying this year a while back, and I'll be done, maybe. I'm back a little bit. But when I was praying right up here, it was about 1 o'clock in the morning. As I was praying, I was weeping. I sinned as I wept for God's people. And all of a sudden, this vision, right there, there it is. It lifted me up in the spirit. Telling you, I stood up above New York. Seen it. I never been to New York, but I know what I seen. And I seen a lightning bolt come down out of heavens, and it struck the middle of New York. And this was in January, and all of a sudden, these all these tentacles went out from that lightning bolt. And I started wailing because as the lightning bolts hit, there was all kinds of chaos. People were actually killing one another. And I prevailed before God. I said, God, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. And He said, I have removed my hand. And as I looked, He said, look to the right. As I looked to the right, there's like a little wall over there. Way over there. There's an ocean there. And all of a sudden it started roaring like this. And all of a sudden this gigantic wave came over New York City just like this. And I asked God, I said, God have mercy. He said, it is a city of the top. And then I told him right here, I think it was in March, was it not, that I warned California. I warned them. I spoke it. I said, your trouble is fixing to hit your coast. And there it is. It's here. We got mayors in, in California shutting the doors to the church houses. They can't even pray out in California. I told them there's yeah. something. They ain't seen nothing. When you get where God is no longer there, yeah. it's going to be total chaos. Yeah. And, then, and everybody, well, I just don't believe God did that. It ain't God. God just lived in His hand and let Satan have it. So, you see my hand? God's a little bit bigger than mine. But I only a hand to it. Only a hand to it. What the Word says. They can go through Islam, they go through Buddha, they go through that fat little man in that Buddha, that Buddha that they yeah. Yeah. They can go do their little lizards and their voodoo, and they go make it. He said, I am the gate to the pastor. And I'm also the way to the Father. You can't go to the Father except through them. Yeah. You can't enter in. In all religions, do not lead to that gate. 
all reli other religions, as you might call it, leads to hell. Right. I'm serious. God's not playing no more. Amen. Playtime's over. Yeah. Playtime is over, y'all. Kind of I'm here to tell you. We're in for a lot of worse trouble now than we've ever known. When I, God showed me that vision when I was praying here a while back, that angel come down like this. He come down. He had a big old angel. He stood one foot here on the sea, one foot on the land, and he had these chains in his hand. He picked them up just like this and jerked the plug, jerked another plug. And all of a sudden, this darkness come up out of his hole. These are demons of hell. Striking men. Yeah. With death, with all kinds of things. Yeah, God. Kind of black. We're called locusts in Revelation. Third of mankind will be slaughtered in this hell, and the rest will not repent of the wicked deeds. Read Revelations. Oh, Revelation scare me. But it's a whole Bible in one book. And all you non believers that don't believe that Jesus is coming, Enoch, the seventh commandment, said in June. I believe it's about the 11th verse. He said, I seen you them come in clouds with ten thousands and thousands of his saints. A tenth, seventh from Adam. Let me tell you all something. Before Jesus Christ was crucified, nobody could go in the next bed. I want to be kind of wonder about is Elijah and Enoch. Enoch was, and then he was. Mm -hmm. Elijah went up in the chair of fire. None of the mothers. You know why I know this? <coughs> because Saul called Samuel out of the pit. Yeah. And Samuel said, why are you calling me from the pit? Sold on the altar. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, they put him in that tomb. He went in the bowels of hell and released the prisoners. Let me tell you something else. I hate Daddy Longlegs with a passion. They used to chase me in my dreams. I mean big old giant spiders. And then in my next dream, I'd be on the back of Leading them right into a big old ditch. They got big old gigantic spiders chained up in hell on the walls. They're bigger than this building, and you people think this is nonsense. These demons that you see on TV, these little monsters that our kids are watching, they're in hell, and they released them into the movies. It's nothing but Satanism and witchcraft. And you just let them watch whatever you want to watch. That's why our children rebel us. Because the babysitter is their music, their video games, and whatever else they do. You can ask my wife, when that, my grandchildren are there, they do not shut no door in my house unless it's the bathroom. That's a rule. And then when I'm in my room praying, they don't open that door. They know not to. Why? Because that's my house. I kick my son out. You can ask him, you ever meet him? I kicked him out. Because he thought he was bigger than me. He thought he was up in the world. And I'll show you what the world was. There's the door. Don't let it hit you. These children are not our gifts. We can train them up in the way of God. He told Moses, he said, you tell the children, you tell them what I have done. You do it by morning, noonday, evening time. You tell them what I have done. But we, we, you know what we've done? We let everybody else to church. Over. And we're going to stand before God for it. Because mm -hmm. he trusted you. 
Anyway, that's all stand. Go to God. Let's pray a little bit. Well, I'm glad to see y'all. I'm glad to see all of y'all. <laughs> Father, 